this one because this is one of the, the more typical plants of the tall grass prairie out west, although it's an endangered species here in Ohio. Only known from a site in Lawrence County, which is a state nature preserve, compass plant preserve, although I suspect very strongly that that was a secondary site that, in fact, it was created when they harvested hay off the, the Darby Plains. And back in the 1860s, London, Ohio was the short term capital of the world. And so people who wanted to buy cattle, like if you lived in Lawrence County, you'd come up, you'd buy your cattle in London, Ohio, and then you'd have cattle drive back down to Lawrence County. And we had a lot of cattle drives in Ohio. You don't, you think of that somehow west in Dodge City. They used to have major cattle drives down what is now 23. But in any event, if you lived in Lawrence County and you wanted to raise shorthorn cattle, that was all woods down there, so you'd cut the woods, but it's going to take a while before you get any green thing for the cattle to feed upon, so what would you do? Well, that first winter would be kind of tough if you didn't provide hay for them. And the cheapest hay was to cut the wild hay off the prairies of the Darby Plains. And I suspect that's what happened, that some of this plant, the seeds from some of this got in that hay, and cattle were driven down there, the hay was put out, and eventually these plants popped up on the hillside that had been cleared for the cattle. But nevertheless, there is historic records of this plant being in the Darby Plains. Someone here knows exactly what this is and why it's got the name that it does. And who wants to share that? Or are you all very bashful? <laughs> this is not a bashful crowd. Sunflower. <laughs> Sunflower. <laughs> He's not, that's not bashful at all. Yeah, this is compass plant. And why is it called compass plant? Tends to orient its leaves in a north and south axis. Oh. That's north, that's south. Now that's about as consistent as moss on the north side of it. <laughs> but it is fairly consistent. Now why in the world would this plant do this? Is it just trying to help you stay, keep from getting lost in the prairie? Obviously, there's a reason for it. Can anyone think of a reason? Did the flowers, did the flowers then go east-west? Is it a helianthus of some sort? It really is. They tend to, although they don't, it's not as obvious as a lot of the members of the helianthus group. But I noticed in the morning, they're always pointing to the east. I'm going to move around a little bit. Does that have to do with the sunlight on the leaves and because they're conserving water? You've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you remember. Yeah, I did. She passes the test. Sure, if you live in the prairie, you have to be adaptable to survive in a very drought-prone environment. Very hot, searing sunshine, dry winds constantly pulling liquids out of your body. One of the ways you do that is by deeping, sinking down your roots as deep as you can. This plant, you're, like I say, you're seeing about one-third of it. It's probably got two-thirds as much root going down, and the taproot on these things, are it's, they're just huge, like huge turnips. But the other thing is if you had that leaf exposed directly to sunlight, You've got all those warming rays pulling moisture out of your system. So if you turn your leaf to the sun like that, you get plenty of light for photosynthesis, but you're not you're not getting baked, basically. And if you have laciniated leaves or slashed leaves, then you're allowing air to circulate, just like on your radiator in your car, helping cool down that surface. So this is all designed for this plant to be able to live in some of the harshest environments on the earth out in the tall grass prairie region. And there are many adaptations that you'll see that prairie plants have. In addition to deep roots, leaves that orient themselves in north-south direction, hairy coatings, waxy coatings, all these things, same kinds of characteristics that many desert plants have for the very same reason. So we have adapting into that, allowing them to fit into that niche that not all plants can do. When we talk about a prairie or a bog or a fen, we're not talking about plants that only grow there we're talking about a specific association of plants in association with one another. Black-eyed Susans, you saw some of them when you started walking down the driveway. You find those almost every place, but they're also commonly found in prairies. They're well suited for a prairie environment. But just because you have black-eyed Susans doesn't mean you have a prairie. But we have black-eyed Susans with compass plant and Indian grass and a bunch of others. Now you have a prairie. So just keep that in mind. The 